So for our first honored retiree this evening, <clears throat> Steve Zaire physical education teacher at Glenwood Park Elementary. Is Steve here with us this evening? There you are. 38 years of service in the Fort Wayne Community Schools. I love this part. Steve is not only an expert at dodgeball, now that's a <laughs> skill, sir. Which college and university certificate did you have there? Man Do Manchester College. Manchester Dodgeball. Medical war ball, not sure, and Superman. He has supported the growth of Glenwood Park I-STEP scores by pulling fourth graders for one-on-one -on -one help with math concepts. He was a de dedicated monitor to the car rider line, and only elementary people understand that car rider line. <laughs> it's an elementary thing. <clears throat> Gaining great respect for families with his greetings. And he has been the quality control manager of Glenwood Park carry-ins over the years. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I don't know why I'm first. I had a Z in my name, but. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, there's a few stories I'd like to share. Um, when I first started in Fort Wayne schools, we had this Asian girl, and she kept rubbing my arms all the time. She said, how do you make that grow so long? <laughs> she is the sweetest thing. And then I had another student just a couple years ago. I said, how old are you, Mr. Zare? I said, I'm 62. He said, well, you're about dead. <laughs> <laughs> Out of the mouths of babes. But I truly am honored to teach in Fort Wayne schools for 38 years. I'll miss the hugs from behind and wherever I get them. Um, it's truly been a blessing to me. Thank you. Thank you. Glenwood had their 50th anniversary. Was it Friday? I can't remember my days anymore. Yeah, and so uh, I'm sure you received a lot of hugs. They had field day, too, all at one time. Jennifer Vaughn, building coach, Northside High School. I know Jennifer's here. 19 years of service. When Jennifer stepped out of the classroom to become a coach, you could come closer. All of you, you don't have to stand over there. It's like we don't know each other. <laughs> she devoted her time to helping all teachers. She has been a mother figure to new and veteran teachers alike. Jennifer will be remembered for her smile, sense of humor, concern for students, encouragement for teachers, quiet presence, and dedication to her work. Phenomenal. Thank you. <clears throat> I have one quick story, and it kind of goes along with this. Um, we got a new special ed teacher in our building, and I'm primarily working with the special education teachers. She came to us in January, and it's been really fun to work with her. She has a lot of personality. She's working with seniors, many of whom I had two years ago when I was their um, reading teacher. The other day she needed me to help out. She had a parent finally come in for a case conference. I said, I'd be glad to go to your class. And she told me later that the students were all excited because I was a real teacher. So, <laughs> she really is a real teacher. They just don't think she is because she hasn't been there long enough. <laughs> Every time I see you now, I'm gonna call you a real teacher. <laughs> Jeannie Taylor, another real teacher. District Instructional Coach, ELL, 30 years of service. Jeannie Taylor helped shape the FWCS ELL program by developing curriculum and materials when published ELL materials were hard to find. You created most of them. Okay. While teaching ELL, she always had a vision for the ELL program beyond her school and became the district's first ELL instructional coach in 2009. Jeannie has been a pillar of the FWCS ELL program through her unwavering commitment to students, families, and personnel. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, in 1986, I started as the only elementary teacher in Fort Wayne Community Schools. Daryl Sherling was the principal at that time. And when he interviewed me, he says, uh, you'll never have more than 15 kids. <laughs> uh, and uh, that particular year, I had 30. The next year we had 60, 
And as you all know, everybody, you know where we are today. We're in every building. So that's a lot of growth. So thank you. It was a great play. And we say that about Jeannie because with the 15 you started with that actually was 30. There weren't a lot of materials. And so uh, as all Fort Wayne Community Schools teachers learn to be very creative, but Jeannie has been the center of a lot of the things we've even started here. So thank you very much. Karen Summers, second grade teacher, Haley Elementary, 18 years of service. Karen has never been one to toot her own horn. She has always done amazing things for her students in the Haley community. Her wit always provided a bit of humor to any meeting or professional learning opportunities. Hmm. She will be remembered as a tender, caring person <clears throat> under a strong exterior who took the success of each of her students personally. Thank you. Thank you. Well, every morning as I logged into Fort Wayne Community's website, I was very proud to be a teacher in Fort Wayne Community. And there was a time when I couldn't imagine not being a teacher, but now I realize it's time to let some new person try to figure it all out. Um, and my heart is in the public schools. I do have a short story, and I hope I don't offend anybody when I tell this. Well, you know what a whiteboard is, a smart board? Well, I teach second grade, and we were doing nonsense words. And I had three little boys, and they were standing there, and each, well, there were three blocks for the nonsense words, and you touch it, it was consonant, vowel, consonant. So you touch the first block, and it tumbles F. Okay, I thought, all right, we'll see. Yep. Tap the second one, you. I thought, what are the chances? Third one, tap, tumble, 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 C. In the background, I hear, And the little boy says, sorry, Mrs. Summers. From the time I stood and heard all that to moving to tap, 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 <laughs> it was like minutes. It was like, <laughs> and I thought for sure I was going to have parents call me. I almost wrote a letter to say this, what ha this is what happened. But didn't hear a word about it. I have told this story so many times that there are people that come up to me and say, can I hear that one more time? <laughs> so I don't have a smart board anymore. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> I'm not a real good storyteller, so I'm going to try to hurry and write it down so I can remember how it because I just, uh, that's a good one. Thank you. <laughs> Donna Roof. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll, I'll get it together here. English teacher, Snyder High School. 32.5 years of service. In 2011, Donna helped form the Northeast Indiana Friends of Public Education. She has testified before the State Board of Education, hosted tri-state conferences, presented at the, national, at the Network for Public Education National Conferences, and has been published in the Washington Post. Donna's passion for teaching, advocacy for students, and collegiality has all, will always be remembered by those with whom she's worked. Thank you so much. Well, as I keep telling people, when they ask me, what's this feel like, I said, well, there are those moments <clears throat> when I get really weepy and I just want to cry. But to snap out of it, I have to keep remembering that there's no crying in baseball. And growing up a Cubs fan, that's all I've been doing this last century, let me tell you. Uh, but not this year. This year's different. This year's much better. Um, there are lots of stories I could share with you. Uh, I did have my years here at Snyder, but I also started out at Southside High School. I'm a girl from Oklahoma. And one story, I knew it at um, Southside. And 
my department chair, Phyllis Bush, was there asking if I could give her a ride over to Ellerdine Cycle because she had a little scooter. And I said, sure, no problem. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> we left on our plan period. Maybe it was lunch, I don't know. But anyway, you know, I said, I'll, you know, let's go back to your house and drop you off. And I got back to the house and she wasn't anywhere to be seen. And I thought, well, she must have gone back to school. And I thought, oh my gosh, I've got to get back to school. What if I lose my job? What if I get fired? They're going to know I'm not in the building. And so I got back to school and no Phyllis. And I thought, oh my gosh, what's happened to her? Where did I leave her? Because I didn't pass her anywhere on the highway back. Well, anyway, her uh, scooter broke, broke down on the way back. But um, I was lucky enough that she uh, let me keep my job. Uh, so it was a close call. But as I go through the years, I think lots of times people think they never win the lotto. And I know I've won it. Um, I feel I've been very, very blessed to be a, a kid from Oklahoma, getting to play sports under Title, under title IX at my university back in town, uh, Cameron University in Lawton, Oklahoma. Um, after I moved up here in 82, I was sub for a lot of years in Fort Wayne Community Schools. I took a position at South as an English PE teacher. An opening came up at Snyder. I began teaching English full-time there. I've been able to coach. Uh, it doesn't get any better than that. Uh, about 10 years ago, if you had told me that I would one day be a breast cancer survivor, I would not have believed that. And uh, thank you. Thank you. And with all the changes that we see going on in education, I think the thing that's probably going to stand out the most for me is that 10 years ago, if you had told me that words like public schools and teachers would become pejoratives in our society, I would have said, you have got to be kidding. And the work I've done with the Northeast Indiana Friends of Public Education is to help bring back that joy of learning and especially the joy of teaching, too, because it's time, folks. We've got to reclaim our schools. And so after this, I plan to continue my advocacy. Um, I have a poster in my room. It has a little dog on it. And it says, when people ask me, what do you plan to do after you retire? I just think of that little poster because the caption says, live like somebody left the gate open. <laughs> and one of my students uh, gave me a little song. She said, the roof, the roof, the roof is on fire. The roof, the roof, the roof is retired. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. The sad part, and the good part is that we have people like Donna, but the sad part is that all of us got into education because we just loved it. And I never thought we'd have the day when we had to fight public perception as much as we fought to make sure our kids could read. Um, so I'm, I'm very proud to have people who are brave enough to stand up. Uh, most of us in public education, not me. Most of us are, are nice, calm people who, you know, try to make things work. Uh, but we have a lot to be proud of here. And so I appreciate, you know, keep fighting for us. And we'll keep producing wonderful results. Evangelina Robles. School Assistant Lindy, Lynn Lee International Spanish Academy. That's a mouthful. <laughs> is Evangelina, is she here? Okay, come on, head toward me. 27 years of service. Evangelina has a strong passion for the Spanish immersion program at Lindley. Her bilingual skills were an asset and she was always willing to do any necessary work to benefit the program with positive energy and kindness. She will be remembered for the strong relationships she established for all students and staff members. There you go. Okay. The only thing that stands, one story, lots of stories I have, but one that I'm, uh, I can think of tonight is when uh, I was assisting in first grade and we were talking about Oh, grandma's grandpa's uh, my mom and cooking baking and so this little girl uh, said oh my mom bakes oh macaroni and cheese whatever so this other little girl she says uh, well my grandma she makes the most wonderful delicious chocolate chip cookies but she said but she kicked the bucket <laughs> <laughs> And that was just so hilarious. It was so funny. That's, uh, like I said, there's a lot of stories. But she was just, she got up and, and uh, she was so proud, of, I guess. But she, was, she kept going and she kept uh, swinging her leg and she said, but she kicked the bucket. <laughs> so. Thank you. <laughs>
That's the one thing about children and the, the part of my career I absolutely love. If you want the truth, ask a child. But be ready for whatever they say. <laughs> Karen, Ro Karen Rhodes, School Improvement Coordinator, Northwood Middle School, 31 years of service. Karen has given unselfishly of her time, effort, and talents to the families, staff, and students of Northwood. Yes, she has. <laughs> she will be remembered for her unflappable demeanor of professionalism and commitment. Karen modeled those qualities in every aspect of her life at Northwood, taking pride in being the go-to person in so many areas of her work. Well, thank you. You know it's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I got my job at Fort Wayne kind of backwards. Um, I was um, I got a phone call one morning, and they sent me to talk to the principal at Nebraska Elementary they had an opening two weeks into the school into the school year and they sent me over there to talk to him and so I went over and he hired me and afterwards I found out that he had been given three people to choose from for this position and he knew the other two and I couldn't be worse than them <laughs> <laughs> so he hired me <laughs> <coughs> While I was at Nebraska, I was Miss I'm Santa. I'm sorry, That's, that was said to you. <laughs> he, 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 he thought he did okay. Oh. He, he was happy with okay. his choice. Good. Um, while I was there, I was Miss Sansom, and we had a, an assembly one day with the, um, the Flame, the soccer team that used to, the arena soccer team. We had a couple players there, a couple young players that were in the assembly. And you know how kids love to ask questions of the soccer players. You know, when you say open it up, ask them questions, they ask all the embarrassing questions, you know. And so the kids asked them, were they married? And the one said, yes, I'm married, but he's not. And one of my kids yells out, Miss Sansom isn't either. <laughs> so, but I, I really would like to say that I appreciate Fort Wayne Community Schools for allowing me to be a leader without being an administrator. I don't think that was nothing on the horizon when I started that you could that you could be a leader from the classroom um, and get to be part of the direction and the decisions of the building and I really appreciate that. You deserve it. <laughs> We've worked very hard over the years to redefine that concept of leadership uh, because one of the things that we know in this district is nobody can do a job alone. And if you find a principal or a superintendent who is real enamored with themselves and think they can get it all done, we wouldn't be where we are if we didn't have leaders at every single level in this district. So thank you. Thank you for being one. Sharon Raypole, fifth grade teacher, Scott Academy, 25 years of service. Hello. Oh, I get to quote Shakespeare. Oh, dear. <laughs> and though she be but little, she is fierce. <laughs> is fitting for Sharon, who has been unafraid to advocate for her students. Sharon's passion for her rural experience helped to provide our urban students with experiences they may never have had the opportunity to explore. She will be remembered most for her feisty sense of humor, tenacity, and passion for helping students succeed. I have a story about you. Oh. <laughs> Turn off the camera. <laughs> I remember when we were really struggling with our ice steps, and we had we did a really good here. Get into the mic because well, it's about you. It's, well, it's about you too. Um, we were really struggling one year with our ice step scores. The whole city was, and we did a pretty good job that year. And you came around and you hugged everybody in our school. <laughs> Because we you'd worked hard. We were very shocked to see you at our door, well, but we were very glad to have you, you know, to come in and, you know, say how much you appreciated us. So I wanted to tell hard. you that. I want to tell you that it's, uh, when I decided to retire, I won't go on and on like some, you know, like I can, but um, I was, I look back at my career 
it was very humbling to know that um, if I have an average of 20 kids in my room over 25 years, can you imagine how many children you know that you've touched? And hopefully they went out better than they came in. That was always the hope, you know, if you have a passion for what you do. And the other day I was helping with uh, get the little uh, students in the car. You know, I work at the, at the end of the day, I work at the car line too and making sure everybody gets in and gets their toes in and everything. And this little boy, he must have been a first grader. He said, he looked at his mom and he said, I want her for my teacher. I was so, you know, I was so touched he said that, you know, because I'm not sure, you know, who's I, who I was, but I, he knew I was helping him in the car. But, I, you know, I, I wanted to say, you know, honey, I'm not going to be here next year, and uh, I just couldn't bring myself to say that then. But I know that the teacher that I'll have in the future will be an awesome one because the teachers at Scott are really, really good, and I'm glad Scott gave me the opportunity to have a career and to touch all those lives, and I'm glad to be here today. Thank you. Thank you so much. I remember that time um, because one of the things our state's done a real good job is to make our teachers doubt that they know what they're doing. Um, and it's real hard as a teacher when you do, you make sure their toes are in the car before the door is closed and you, you buy things, you wipe noses, you hear stories that no one else will listen to. <laughs> And then people by, try to define you by your test score. They don't know all the things you did to just make sure kids came that day. Um, so we've, we've had some rough years in Fort Wayne Community Schools until we got our sea legs. Um, and we don't let the state define us. And so uh, Scott was going through a rough period. And people who had done a really hard job just needed the district to say, this is important and you did a great job and forget what they say. I'm not trying to start a revolution or anything. However, <laughs> however, Cheryl Paul, school assistant, Northcrest Elementary, 13.5 years of service. <clears throat> Cheryl has a smiling, positive, steady presence. That's a lot of good words there. <laughs> Wherever there was an emergency, she knew what to do and took care of things efficiently. Mrs. Paul taught us all according to one teacher. She taught us how to treat each other by her example. Although I was the teacher and she was the aide, I always felt as though I was learning at the feet of the master. How kind. <clears throat> well, I don't know. I didn't know I was going to have to do this or I, may, I might not have come for the dinner. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we don't tell you to you. <laughs> but after listening to everybody, you did such a wonderful job before me. Uh, but the one lady that uh, did the, um, spelled the F word, that brought, a, a brought something to mind because I was a reading recovery teacher for many years and uh, reading recovery teachers work with first graders one on one, which was a wonderful job to do. Um, and one of the things we had to do was administer tests, of course. And one of the stories in the test uh, had to do with a hippopotamus. And there happened to be a ditch, and the hippopotamus <laughs> fell in the ditch. Well, anybody that works with young children know that B's and D's get mixed up. <laughs> so when, he, when the person, little kid came to the, uh, that word, they looked at it looked up at me, <laughs> looked down again, looked up at me with this look like, you know, should I say that word or will I get in trouble? <laughs> so anyway, they, they went ahead and said it and then kept right on going. So, <laughs> so I, I, I've got some fun stories for three and recovery, but it's been a few years since I've done that and I finished up my, uh, my uh, last few years uh, as an assistant in a kindergarten room and uh, enjoyed that immensely. So I'll miss those kindergarten hugs, but I've got grandkids now to give my hugs to. So thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Renee Page, School Improvement Coordinator for Forest Park Elementary School. They said school improvement. I'm changing that to interventionist. Okay. You probably do all of it, so it really, yes. 
jack of all like trades, to. let's just put it that way. 30.5 years of service. Here you go, dear. Renee's smile and her kind and giving nature will be missed at Forest Park, where she has enjoyed working with students. She has built positive relationships with staff and students and has been particularly able to build a rapport with difficult students. They just have an opportunity for you to change their behavior. Her intervention team says she's a woman with a sense of humor and a heart of gold. Gosh, I think I should sit down now. <laughs> Uh, I also was a reading recovery teacher before intervention, and I've taught uh, reading for probably most of my 30 years. Um, and the, uh, one of the interesting things, uh, or one of the funny things that happened was one of my students <clears throat> mixed my name up and called me Miss Book instead of Miss Page. <laughs> <laughs> Ruth Knopfzinger, third grade teacher, Harris Elementary School, 27.5 years of service. Come closer. She smiled at me first thing I got here this, this afternoon. Thank and you. And I told her to behave herself. And I told her forget it. <laughs> I would try for you. I said that, didn't I? Yes. Ruth has a great love for nature and the environment and will be remembered for her work with Trees Indiana. I don't even know what that is, so you mm -hmm. have to tell us. And her love of science. Ruth has touched many lives during her career and will be missed by all at Harris. And they wish her well. It's not Don, it's Ron. <laughs> oh, it's a good thing you changed that because then he'd be thinking you were doing something you shouldn't. I know. <laughs> and they wish her well as she goes on to spend more time with her husband, Ron, Ron. <laughs> and her children and grandchildren. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I just would. I have always been so appreciative of working for Fort Wayne Community Schools and have really felt blessed to have just been able to become a teacher. Uh, I was a little later in life doing that. And I wanted to, you know, this has been a great year for me because I have just enough trouble to realize, oh yeah, I'm, I'm going to miss that part, not. And, and, and then, you know, enough other than really sweet kids that those are, the, those are the ones you're going to miss. And one of the things that's been great about the school has been you, Wendy, because um, Wendy, you always are so open to the elementary level and you always are so free with your hugs. And, and whenever, and we would, I would see you in the grocery store there at um, DuPont. Oh, and Kroger's. Yeah, Kroger's. Or Target. <laughs> and, and, you know, we always, I would always go up and say, hi, Wendy, and she always, is, always wanted to offer a hug. And, you know, that really means a lot to all of us to have you. You know, you may not know my name and know who I am, but you know that I'm a teacher and you, you show your appreciation for us. And I know as a teacher, we appreciate you. Thank you for saying Thank that. You. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Since you're all retiring, I can tell you the secret of why I hug people, because it makes me feel better. <laughs> people really think I'm trying to hug them, and I do, you know, I do care for you. But sometimes in leadership roles, all you hear are the things that people are not happy with. I have never run into a teacher or anybody who works in this district, if they see me out in public, that doesn't want to talk about something positive. And I have never walked away from anybody that works in this district without feeling better. So, you know, um, I say to everybody, just tell me your name, because today I don't even know what mine is. <laughs> I know your face. I know you work somewhere here, so thank you. <laughs> but thank you. I'll see you at Kroger's. I don't go often, but I'll see you there anyway. <laughs> Roberta Mustafa, student interventionist, Arlington Elementary School, 33 years. Roberta was a reading recovery teacher too. Yeah. <laughs> Bobby is a master teacher who has devoted her career to teaching children to read. A quiet and calm force who always put the needs of kids first, Bobby has moved thousands of students to higher achievement as a reading recovery teacher and now an interventionist. Bobby's efforts are long lasting and the staff of Arlington wishes her much joy and peace in her new endeavors. Thank you very much. Like many of you, um, I feel like I have been an intern while I've been at Fort Wayne Community Schools because I've been looking forward to this day almost like a graduation. And that's how I feel. Um, those of you who know the family know that 
we have 330 children waiting for us a month from now over in Sierra Leone. And so it's like I've been trying to figure out all about reading all this time and all the different things that they keep changing the in-services and you go through this phase and that phase. And now it's time to put it to use and figure out how to teach it to a whole bunch more. So thanks. Oh. I tell people all the time that one of the reasons that we can survive as a district is that no matter what changes outside of the district, what we do inside doesn't change. That we have good people that whatever they throw at us, we try to figure out a way to make it work. And every single time we go back to the basics. Because there's really only a couple of ways to teach reading, right, ladies and gentlemen? So thank you, thank you, thank you. Peggy McFadden, kindergarten teaching teacher, Holland Elementary. 26.5 years. Don't tell any of the stories about any of the stuff we've done together. <laughs> I'm going to tell people it's not true. <laughs> Peggy does not shy away from a challenge. She will be remembered for her compassion for her students and for always smiling when advocating for her students. In retirement, Peggy will have plenty of time to spend with her grandchildren. <laughs> when JR told me today that I would have to speak, I said, well, I don't know. I only talk to five-year-olds. I'm not sure I can talk to adults. Um, I have enjoyed teaching at Fort Wayne Community Schools. And yeah, when we got started at Aerospace you know, at um, <laughs> Pleasant Center, we have a lot of good stories. Um, I have stories for Deb Cruzy, who I'm sitting with and retiring with today because she was the person that I did my student teaching with because like some of the rest of you, I started late in life. Um, Bruce introduced me to a wonderful um, summer program called Getting to Know Fort Wayne. When he was done doing it, I got to do it for several years and absolutely loved it. So lots of good memories from many of you who are sitting here. Um, and I'm very blessed to have 12 grandchildren. And so I will always be with children. And that's what I love doing. Um, I guess when J.R. said I'd have to say something, I thought, okay, my husband and I love country music, and um, one of our favorite songs right now is Tim McGraw's Humble and Kind, and if you've never heard the words to that, you need to listen to it because there's a lot that teachers can learn from it. Um, it says they have mountains to climb, but teach them to be humble and kind, and I think that's one of the things we need to do along with teaching them dibbles and M-class math and <laughs> all the other things. Um, his favorite line from it is, visit grandpa whenever you can. Um, you I'm sorry. <laughs> um, it won't be a waste of your time. So I guess what I'd like to say to the administrators here, um, invite us old retired teachers back in. It won't be a waste of your time. And it won't be a waste for the kids either because we still love them. Thank you. Uh, Peggy didn't get the memo. There are applications at the door that we have to wait a certain period, as we were talking about, because the state makes us. But we expect for people to come back. You know, the subbing, the volunteering, we really don't care which one you do. Uh, but we'll have those applications for you later. Jane Masters. Secretary of Vocational Ed, 27 years of service. Oh, she's helped me figure out which room I was supposed to be in a lot of different days. Thank you very much. <laughs> Jane always has a servant mentality and established great working relationships with coworkers across the board. Jane was the go-to person for support and telling people which room they're supposed to be in and problem solving. Her ability to get the job done, positive attitude, and willingness to take on any task are greatly, will, will be greatly missed. I was lucky to um, have 27 years with Fort Wayne Community Schools, and I, I had um, eight years, nine years at Washington Center Elementary before I came to Anthos Career Center. And then while I was at the Career Center, I had, I was lucky enough to have a job where I did things for teachers, purchased equipment for teachers, um, helped them get training they, ha they wanted. So it was like I had all this money that I could spend. 
and I had to sometimes remind them that it wasn't my money, but, but um, it was nice to be able to do nice things for other, other people, and I was always felt appreciated, so it was a wonderful job to have, and uh, um, it, was a, it was a great job to have, so Thank I will you. miss it. Thank you. You can come back. Jane Lundy, third grade teacher, St. Central Elementary. 42 years of service. Don't tell any stories either. <laughs> <laughs> Through a variety of educational practices and high expectations, Jane's primary goal has been to do the very best every minute of every day for every child. With compassion and respect, she has served as a role model for her students and her peers. Mr. Crytel would like to know if more baked tree. It's always about you, isn't it, Bill? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Crytel would like to know if more baked treats can be expected now that you're retired. <laughs> you don't have to answer that. <laughs> well, I just want to say that I've had a wonderful career in Fort Wayne Community Schools with a lot of wonderful experiences. And I'm sorry, I do have to tell a story. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, back in the uh, 70s, I took a professional day because as a young teacher, I wanted to learn all that I could from um, my fellow colleagues. And so I decided that I would spend uh, part of my professional day at Ward School, the school where um, I attended elementary school. Um, my relationship began with Fort Wayne Community Schools uh, back in 1956 when I became a kindergarten student at Ward School. And um, I had several friends there and uh, I observed in several classrooms. One of them was a fourth grade teacher that um, you knew was going someplace. And uh, she had a lot of zest and a lot of love for her kids. And I'm just really proud that I got to observe this teacher because how many of you can say that you observed our superintendent when she was first teaching? <laughs> <laughs> so that was a joy of mine. But one of my proudest moments came in my second to the last year of my career. And that is when I am so proud to say that I taught on the same staff with two of my former third graders. Um, one, um, Melissa Townsend, who is now a kindergarten teacher in our building, and the other one, Derek Burgett, who is now a communications specialist at Croninger Elementary in the magnet program there. And um, I have a third former third grader that I am real proud of that many of you know, and that's Carissa Richardson, who serves on our discussion and negotiations team for Fort Wink, um, for uh, FWEA. So I'm real proud of not only those three kids, but all of my former students that have um, really stayed with Fort Wayne Community Schools. So thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Some of the best years of my life were on the second floor at Ward Elementary. <laughs> I learned all the things they didn't teach me in college. My students taught me a lot about what was important and what wasn't. But the other part that I loved about being at war is it was still back in the days when the community was a part of the school. And as teachers, our responsibility was to know the parents as much as we knew the students. Um, and what I just loved about being at war is some kids would go home for lunch, and when they come back, they'd bring you food. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Peggy Loveless, bus driver, transportation, 15 years of service. <clears throat> Peggy's work <coughs> ethic was her greatest contribution to the transportation department. She was a dependable employee who enjoyed working with children and took pride in the way she performed her job. She will always be remembered for her likable personality and a refreshing sense of humor that helped others get their day off to a great start. <laughs> I firmly believe that God guided me into being a bus driver 
because at the time in 1985, I couldn't stand my own three kids in the car. <laughs> it's true. But I survived. I survived because somebody is looking out for me and the children help. They've taught me a lot. I'm a lot more patient. I ask my own kids. I've learned to be a better driver and a better person. And the only story I want to tell is of this lady at Weiser Park <coughs> that could run up and down the sidewalk and facilitate 21 large school buses and get all those kids to the right bus at dismissal and run in high heels on ice. <laughs> Dr. Robinson. <laughs> I was always in awe of her because I would tiptoe on ice and she was always just like Superman. <laughs> we never lost a child. We never got him on the wrong bus. She never fell down. <laughs> and that just stays in my mind that she could run on ice in high heeled shoes. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. That's because I was about 30 pounds lighter. Um, and I was, uh, Weiser Park was a transportation hub. Remember that back in the day? And so all of the magnet programs, the kids had to come to Weiser Park. And those of you who know where Weiser is, there's no street space for buses around Weiser Park. Um, I learned to be a superintendent out on the sidewalk, getting 25 <laughs> buses, neighbors yelling because they couldn't go down the street. But it was a phenomenal experience being the transportation hub person at Weiser Park. I can't even stand in hills now, let alone run. <laughs> Deborah Lason, school assistant, Tolls New Tech, 26.5 years of service. Deb Lason absolutely loves working with children, including those challenging kids. We can have some, including our own, who like to push your buttons. She will be remembered for her love-hate relationship with computers <laughs> and her desire to constantly cook for the staff. Deb will spend her retirement being a diehard sports grandma and visiting all the local boutiques and craft fairs. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, having, being in the middle of the alphabet, it didn't matter whether you started well, at the end or the beginning I tried. because I got to hear stories which triggered a lot of things for me. But um, one was an age thing. And the very first year I worked, I don't know what, what it is with kids and age, but they always want to know how old you are, right? I mean. And I never tell. I say a lady never tells her age. But the very first year, I said, OK, if you really want to know on the last day of school, I put this humongous math problem. You know, always the teacher person, right, on the board. And if you really want to know, you figure that out. Now, it probably took me longer to come up with the math problem, make sure it was right. Not one of them wanted to know that bad. So <laughs> that was the only time, because I wasn't smart enough to keep that math problem, that I ever did that. And in the meantime, I go, well, you know, how old do you think I am? And I haven't figured out yet whether it's the really smart kids that guess the low numbers. But, you know, I, those are the ones you kind of like more that day, I think. So, but I am going to miss. And as she said, I'm not sure who wrote this, but the challenging ones are my favorites. I'm probably the only person in the history of <laughs> Toll School that says UB, which is the lunchtime homework sessions, is my favorite time of the day. And I don't think anybody else has ever said that. But that's that one-on-one -on -one connection with kids that either don't get something or, you know, that particular day they may be really upset and you have a little talk about, well, if you got it done last night, you, you probably wouldn't be here today. But yes, and, and I started out as a volunteer in my kids' school and when I needed a job, I decided this is probably what I should do for a, a living, a, you know, something to make money. And 26 years later, I'm giving it up to become a volunteer again and guess where that's going to be, <laughs> I hope. And we don't have to wait as long to volunteer, do we? No, you don't. There you go. No, you day don't. two. A day, day two, two, not day one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank day you. Day two. <laughs> Deborah Cruzy, kindergarten teacher, teacher Holland Elementary, 39 years. You don't tell any stories either. Here, just take this I and don't tell, tell any stories. stories. I won't. During Deb's time with FWCS, she was the teacher representative for the PTA and worked closely with parents and staff. She has always been a strong member of the FWA. 
Deb has established long-lasting relationships with students and staff and will be greatly missed. I don't know what to say or where to begin. The first one I have to thank is my husband. My husband has moved me all over the place with Fort Wayne. I started at McCulloch and then I went to Studi and then I got bumped out of Studi on a half a kid and went to Bunch and then I was at Bunch for a long time where I made tons of friends that are in this room and I've loved every minute of it. I've taught I kept working my way down. I started out in second grade in Southern Indiana. I've taught 43 years, but and then I moved down, moved into first grade at Fort Wayne with McCulloch, and then I went to readiness and kindergarten, and they're all wonderful levels. I think we all touch lives in all kinds of ways, and especially those little ones. Uh, the funniest story I have to tell is probably the carpool line again. Um, we have people coming up, and you know you're loading cars. This is way back, and. Uh, we, I opened the door and all this trash started pouring out of the car and I didn't know whether to put the kid in, what do I do? <laughs> the parent said, oh, just put the kid in, throw the trash back in too. So I'm sitting here picking up all the trash and putting that all back in the car. So there are many, many, many of you here tonight that have touched my lives. My daughters have been touched by your lives. I have both daughters in education. I have a daughter who teaches geometry and algebra uh, now at Penn High School. She was at Carmel and my other daughter's a school psychologist at Carmel. They all thought education is the place to be and I as well as all of you here in the room and it's just been a wonderful part of my life. I'm just going to enjoy being with my five grandchildren and getting them ready for a kindergarten. So, and Peg's been a wonderful cohort and Bruce and JR has been a wonderful principal the last couple of years. And I work with a lot of great people from Dr. Scott all the way up, Wendy. I, there's so many people here in the room that have touched my life in so many special ways. Thank you so much. Thank you. One of the things I remember because in my former life I was the, on the negotiations team for the district. Um, and uh, people often have this idea of negotiation sometimes because there, there are some very tense times. But I think we resolve several contracts over meals because it gets late at night and you get real tired. And I'll never forget, I don't know if you were on the team, when we used to have a Uniserv director who wanted to have healthy food. And so he was in charge of ordering the food. And I think this restaurant went out of business the next day. Was it the, the uh, what was it called, healthy and thin or healthy and some kind of something. So we have been there all day and night. And he, they brought this food in that you couldn't quite tell. It wasn't quite sushi. It was like stuff and paper. I mean, it was, <laughs> it was horrendous. <laughs> and those of you who know Charles Green, Everyone was trying to be polite. Charles says, forget this. He went out and got ribs. <laughs> it didn't take us very long to finish that contract. After Everybody was so glad we didn't have to eat that healthy, skinny, sweet, I don't know what it was. I've never, I don't even know where he got it from. So thank you. Oh, I wasn't supposed to be telling stories. Uh, Jill Embody, <laughs> I'm sorry, bus driver, transportation, 19.5 years of service. Jill's love for students she transported and for children in general was one of her greatest contributions. The students always knew they would be greeted with smiling faces in the morning and her continued friendliness in the afternoon. God bless you if you can still be friendly in the afternoon. <laughs> her co-workers will miss her friendly, easygoing manner. Thank you, Jill. Can you get it? Come on. You know, I wouldn't have been here if I knew this. <laughs> no. Okay. We don't lie to you, we just don't tell you. <laughs> okay, just a couple of things. Um, of the 20 years that I drove a bus, 12 was on a big bus, and eight in special needs. And special needs was just, took my heart. It was just best job ever. Loved it. Now, as far as the story goes, there's lots of them, but this one, I don't know if Frank remembers, but we had, uh, I had a bus assistant and one of our other fellow drivers, I don't know if anyone knows her, Suzanne Jeffrey, she always had the cleanest bus ever, always clean, so, and she bragged about it a lot, so <laughs> we had all of our kids 
wrinkle up a whole bunch of paper, <laughs> put them in the bags, big garbage bags. We got pop cans, empty ones from home, brought them. And then when she was done with the morning route, we went out to her bus, put it all over her bus. <laughs> so when she came back to do her afternoon route, we walked out with her and she opened the door and she saw this trash coming down. <laughs> She didn't say a word to us. She got on that bus, slammed the door in our face. <laughs> she drove up to the gas pump, and, and I, I'm like, oh, no, we better go. So I got on my bus. <laughs> we went around, and believe it or not, it could not happen. Oh, my goodness. She went up front into the office of the garage. Sure enough, there's a sheriff there. <laughs> she sent him out. <laughs> oh, Mary had just started working. She thought, oh, I'm going to get fired now. <laughs> and uh, I mean, and the sheriff came up and he got his pad out and he's like, what's going on? <laughs> and I'm like, well, if you need any DNA evidence, it's right there. Okay, so he said, no, you know, it's okay if I'd had my pad that day, the, the real one. So he left and so we're in, we got over to her bus and we're trying to sweep it up. We were going to clean it up. We're trying to sweep it up and everything, and all of a sudden, I'm in the back, Mary's up front, here comes Frank Jackson. Someone had called him, he comes up, and I, I, I just said, hit the deck. <laughs> I got down under the seat, Mary, she's up front, couldn't go anywhere. And he got on and he said, what is going on here? And I, I, I've never, I've always been a quiet person, and I never, but I said, Mary did it, <laughs> which, which was the bus assistant. I said, she did it, <laughs> but we cleaned it up. But I have enjoyed all my years of driving. Thank you. I'm in shock. Because I'm thinking of how do we ever discipline children after you heard that story? <laughs> Frank, Frank, Frank. I know. All right, here. I'm making sure. <clears throat> Jennifer Johnson, first grade teacher, Irwin Elementary, 37 years of service. Jennifer is the, and everything's in real big capital letters and it's even bolded. So I don't know what that means. Who did that? The fiercely <laughs> loyal matriarch arc of Irwin Elementary. Among the adults, she is the best known for her faithfulness, tenacity, quick wit, claiming that sarcasm is her love language. That is true. <laughs> you just made I that have up. I a shirt. You, that you made it up. <laughs> With children, she is steadfast and caring. Jennifer has a mind like a steel trap, and with her will go a historical slice of Irwin's last 30 plus years. She will be missed. No Thanks. Story. No stories. Yeah, just go on. Oh, come on. I am a product of the Fort Wayne Community Schools. I went to Hillcrest, Maplewood, Kikianga, Elmhurst, and I'm a member of the second graduating class of Wayne High School. That was a long time ago. So my dad is a retired principal. Fort Wayne Community Schools, 26 years at Adams, and I have a daughter that's been teaching for 13 years. Uh, most recently across the hall from me, which has been a very fun experience. So um, at one time, my entire family has been em employed by Fort Wayne Community Schools. So it's going to seem really odd on the first day of school um, to not have someone. Well, my daughter will be there, but to not be at school, that's going to be strange. So two quick stories. One, you all, you all have that kid who dances on your last nerve. I know you do. Uh, it comes to your mind very quickly. And I had one of those in 2001, and I wish I knew what he was doing now, but um, I'm, a, I, I'm a pretty um, calm, you know, person. I don't often, I don't yell, but this, this kid, well, I didn't really yell, but I was in his face, okay? You know what that's like. And I was in his face, and he looked at me, and he said, Mrs. Johnson, I think you need a mint. <laughs> 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 
and I walked away and I laughed and then I came back and I finished what I had to say. And the other thing is, um, so a lot of you are old enough to remember, and, and I didn't love this, I, I actually hated it, but do you remember when you had that, you paddled kids, you remember those days. Um, I hated it, but it was just what you did then. And it was, I was 24 years old, and I'd just come back from maternity leave, and I was teaching um, special ed, and Dr. Bill Schrader was my principal at the time. And I had to paddle a kid. It's just what I had to do. And I missed and hit Dr. Schrader. <laughs> Not one of my finer moments. <laughs> and, and he just, he didn't say a word. You know, he just walked away. So um, one thing I would like to say is I was, you know, I went back and forth about retiring this year, and it was going to be one more year, two more years, and then I saw the class coming up, and I thought, yeah, it's going to be one more year, <laughs> which would be my daughter's class. But um, in January, you know, my boss left us for a little while because she had surgery and, and some cancer treatments, and I said, I, I had made up my mind by then, I said, you better be back here for that dinner to sit with me, so thanks. Thank you. <laughs> it's amazing, we have a lot of people uh, who started their school careers in Fort Wayne Community Schools, so um, we have another one of those folks, Leslie Howard, sixth grade science teacher, Shawnee Middle School, 43 years of service. Principal Matt Schiebel says he has always enjoyed watching parents and even sometimes grandparents remark to Alessa's current students, hey, I had Mr. Howard when I was in school and he was my favorite teacher. Les models lifelong learning for students and colleagues, understanding the importance of educating the whole child. Teaching for him is not a job, but a calling. And he models it every day. <laughs> This is my classmate, <laughs> but she was the youngest one in the class. Yeah. <laughs> we went to Central High School together, and I don't know if you remember, uh, I think we were in, had science lab together. We had all of our classes together because we were in, the, back in the old days, we laned people. Isn't that just disgusting and barbaric? <laughs> and uh, Les got me through some science and math kinds of things uh, because I was too busy being every place I wasn't supposed to be. <laughs> And uh, my lab partner here got me through high school. So, uh, you know, we've been together for a long time, for yeah. a long time. So here you go. All right. I don't know if I need that. A uh, couple of stories to share. Uh, I do love what I've done all these years. Uh, uh, I think uh, there's a movie uh, about the last cowboy. And in that movie, there's a line where... Um, they asked the last cowboy what it's, why he did what he did in his life. And he said that you do things that you love and you do things the right way. And not many people get to do that. And I've got to do that in my life. A um, couple stories. Uh, a few years ago, I was honored for my teaching. And I remember that I had a student a long time ago who was a real pain in class. And I had always told him that he could be a much better person. And he had lots of ability. And after being recognized, I got a letter from that student. And it said that uh, he was now a geological engineer. <laughs> and I had really turned him around. And he always remembered what I had done for him. So that was my heartfelt moment. Today, I had a silly moment happen. I, was, I cleaned out my room uh, and got rid of my crazy hats that I wear on Crazy Hat Day. Uh, I had donated them to a sale that we do at our school for Sh Shawnee Brave Bucks. And I, had, I have a club at my school. I've taught fishing for several years as a club. And I gave away some fishing hats and some all kinds of crazy hats. 
But we went down to sign yearbooks after lunch with our sixth graders, and one of my sixth graders couldn't wait, and she came up with a bag, and she pulled out one of my fishing hats and one of my fishing mugs, not knowing that it was mine, and said, I bought this for you, Mr. <laughs> That's my silly story. And you took it and never told I did. I told my wife. I told my wife it was meant to be, so we took it home. So now it's at home. <laughs> Kathy Fry, physical education teacher, Abbott Elementary, 18 years of service. Kathy here. There you go, I was gonna say. <clears throat> Kathy's greatest contribution to Abbott has been her long, has been her never ending willingness to give extra time for any event or students. She could often be seen slinging spaghetti into plates or helping move chairs. She also took a new, on new projects in class to enhance students' interest in learning. Kathy has a beautiful heart and that will be remembered most about her at Abbott. Thank you. Thanks. Um, I remember starting out as the youngest teacher in my building, and I think it was two years ago I realized I was actually the oldest teacher in the building. <laughs> and I'm not even the oldest teacher here, I know. Um, I have had lots of experiences all the way from teaching kindergarten through GED classes. Um, and it's been a, I've had a really good teaching career. I was not ready to retire, but um, I got ovarian cancer last October, and uh, it just kind of put me in the place where I needed to retire because I could not really commit to my students 100%. So I see lots of faces of people that I worked for and people that I worked with had a really, really good experience at Fort Wayne. Um, I started, this is my 32nd year, and my husband and my two daughters have just been my support, so. See? See? Now just remember, those of you that aren't really that ready, those volunteer forms, <laughs> The good thing about retiring is you don't have to do it every day. You can get up one day and go, I'm not going today. <laughs> we'll take you part time. You can come do any project you want. We appreciate it. Um, I'm not sure. Mark's not here, is he? Okay. All right. Bruce Floor, second grade teacher, Holland Elementary. 26.5 years, and that's, if that's the wrong number, I didn't do it. <laughs> Bruce started his career as a custodian while finishing his degree in teaching. He can always be counted on to be a friendly hello to all who meet him, and he will be remembered for his kindness to students and staff. In his retirement, Bruce will have much more time to enjoy the lake. You could come back and volunteer too, though. I just <laughs> want to say that. Just trying to say. Thank you. I uh, told Mr. Ankenbrook that I would not uh, relate the story about the uh, young man uh, urinating in a desk in my classroom, so <laughs> I, I won't be telling you that one. Uh, two points about that, though. One is <laughs> he was very quick. <laughs> and the other point is Thank God it was an empty desk. <laughs> so, but to quote uh, Graham Nash, uh, we can change the world, rearrange the world. It's dying to get better. And that's what we've all done. That's our legacy. So always keep that child in your heart alive, uh, whether you're a teacher or not. And don't forget about the corny jokes. <laughs> Thank you so much, that was beautiful. <laughs> 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 
one of the things you'll learn when you're working um, with children is that even if you wrote it in a book, people wouldn't believe it. <laughs> um, my first principalship was at Price, and I had a young man that I got this frantic call on the radio. We didn't have cell phones back then in the dark ages, that I had to meet the bus. So that wasn't necessarily an unusual occurrence, but the bus driver was hysterical. So I came out the side door price, and you could see this bus careening around because hanging by his feet outside the bus was the kindergarten. <laughs> now this young man was a frequent flyer in my office, so <laughs> I was not surprised. I was trying to figure out how he got his little body, because you know the windows didn't open that much, so I was trying to figure out how he did it. So I got the child off the bus, and unfortunately, it was grandparents' day. <laughs> so I'm helping him to my office to try to figure out why he would be hanging out the bus. And he used every word, every four-letter word he could think of as I escorted him down the hall. So I'm trying to quick step him into the office because I was not a happy person. And he is calling me all these names. And I forgot that I had this room full of people, the gym for grandparents' day. So I quick stepped him back looked in the room and said, excuse me, I have something to do, and I will never forget. This grandmother who was sitting by the door, she said, you just go on, honey, you do what you have to do. <laughs> <laughs> so I had him wait in the office so I could go finish grandparents' day, but nobody will believe that. that you, uh, we had kids who were hanging off the side of the bus during grandparents' day. Cynthia Fisher, teacher levels ages 9 through 12, Tolls Intermediate Montessori, 21.5 years of service. Cindy is a true Montessorian, that's a big word, who lives and breathes the philosophy. She will be remembered for her singing and stories. Tammy she, said I couldn't sing today. You can do whatever you want to. <laughs> she has a quick little ditty, including hand motions for every math strategy and language arts rule out there. Go for it. Cindy will enjoy her retirement with her grandchildren and her husband. No, is Larry your husband? Because now I'm nervous about saying husband names. <laughs> if you want to sing here, have at it. No, don't let her no, stop thank you. Thank you. Um, I really don't have anything funny to, to tell. Um, I feel better if I'm sitting on the floor teaching, so if you guys at all get down off your chairs. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Camby Fairden, foreign language teacher, Snyder High School, 23 years of service. Wow. Camby will most be remembered for her spirit of cooperation during curriculum planning and alignment. You've been doing that quite a while. And her desire to be a part of the spirit and heartbeat of each school where she taught. But she especially loves Southside, where she still bleeds green. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Co-workers will remember her, will remember she was good with the more challenging students, dedicated to her job, and always willing to help a colleague. I'm sorry, that's I would not have come if I'd known I had to speak. Oh, <laughs> I really Put the mic say. down and go for it. Je peux parler en français? On peut comprendre si je parle français? Oui? That's what I did for 23 years. <laughs> Camby, I took French four years in high school. And I have to finish. Two years in college. When I got to DePaul University, my French teacher made an agreement with me. If I would come to class and never try to speak the language, I could get a C. <laughs> she begged me not to speak the language, so I didn't. didn't so I. You didn't have me. No, see, that was about to say if I'd have had you, I'd have been better off. <laughs> Stephen Douglas, <clears throat> case manager, Adams Elementary School, 24 years of service. And I don't know what Adams is going to do. Steve embodies the philosophy of servant leadership. It is a disservice to identify him only as the case manager of the school. Whatever task he was asked to address, he did it. 
thoroughly and with compassion. He was always known as Mr. Fix-It around the school. Students' glasses, students' desks, tables, etc. Steve's ability to joke around with students and put a smile on their faces will be missed. And Federa probably is in tears now, so come on up before she starts really crying. Now that I'm retiring, I can share this. That uh, 24 years ago when I uh, sent a resume in for Fort Wayne Community so I had no intention of working for Fort Wayne Community Schools. I uh, did it to appease my wife. That's a nice way of saying to shut her up. Because <laughs> I was working over in Ohio as, in a mental health center as a counselor for several years, driving an hour over and back each day, bad weather, and, she said, and she's a music teacher in Fort Wayne Community Schools at Waynedale now. And she said I would like, she goes, Get, take this job. That you don't have to drive, I don't have to worry about you. And so I went ahead and sent the resume in. But you know, when I interviewed with Marg Roberts about the position, she, got, she shared with me all the opportunities I would have, not only to do the counseling part, but work with families and children in their homes, in the school and everything. I just, I, I called her two times after the interview saying, have you made a decision? You want to hire me? And I got the job. And you know, as a case man, you never know what's going to happen, just like anybody else. You know what's going to happen. First day of school this year was no exception. During registration, a parent came, a grandparent says, don't let my grandson eat watermelon, because when he eats it, his face will immediately swell up. And so I went to the food service person and said about the watermelon, she goes, we really don't serve watermelon at lunch. I said, okay. First day of school, what do we have? <laughs> I walk into the cafeteria, I see they're eating watermelon, I say, oh no, and I'm running around looking for the kindergarten with a fat face, you know, <laughs> what am I going to do? And all of a sudden I see him, I said, I look at him, I said, did you eat the watermelon? He's across the table, I said, did you eat the watermelon? He said, no. This, the, the assistant is looking at me and she goes, what? And I said, you got to understand, if he eats watermelon, his face swells up. Unbeknownst to me, a little girl sitting there overheard the conversation, gave out a scream, I ate the watermelon! I ate the watermelon! I ate the watermelon! <laughs> We're trying to calm her down. The little boy's crawling across the table. No, my face! My face! <laughs> this is a typical day as a case manager. <laughs> After 24 years, I'm calling it a quiz. Thank you. <laughs> Can't you just see that? <laughs> I'm at Glenwood and, and the principal's talking about them. They had gone over to the Snyder Field to do this picture where the kids made the 50, <laughs> uh, the number 50. And so he's explaining to the kids how the picture was taken and he's talking about the man who was up on the, tire, on the, uh, on the tower to take the picture. Now you know how kindergarten kids are. Two rows, a whole, the whole front of the the uh, playground turns around, they're trying to find the man on the tower. <laughs> Takes them a good two or three minutes to get everybody, no, he's not up there now. <laughs> he's gone. <laughs> Penny Dara, Title I Math Interventionist, Miami Middle School, 19 years of service. There you are. Hi, Penny. Penny made a significant impact on the school's Title I program integrating project-based learning into the curriculum. You've been doing that quite a while. I know. She was firm yet fair, and by the end of the year, her students showed amazing growth. She will be remembered most for her willingness to tackle everything head on, her honest opinions and frankness in discussions. You'll have to excuse my voice. I had surgery. Um, that's one of the reasons I'm retiring. I hadn't planned on it. but. Uh, my voice is supposed to be back by now, but um, for some reason it's not. And it would be very difficult to teach um, in middle school without a strong <laughs> voice, even though we know the best is in the middle. Um, I have taught in middle school for 17 and a half years, and I love it. I started out at elementary, but a math position came open at Kikianga, and that has always been my love, is math. And I've loved it for the whole time I've been teaching it. My favorite moment is when I was transitioning between sixth and eighth grade math, and I was teaching seven plus and algebra. And I had my students for three years in sixth grade, seven plus in algebra. And at the end of their eighth grade year, 
we had a big party and they were all crying and what are we going to do? You're not going to be my math teacher next year. So I told them, I said, you're going to be fine. Um, and they were. And I still hear from those students. That is one of the joys I get is when the kids Facebook me, ask me to be their uh, Facebook buddy. Um, I've been invited to weddings and many graduations and I'm going to miss it. Um, but I do have a grandchild now, so I do have something to take their place. It's been a wonderful opportunity working at Fort Wayne Community Schools. I have made so many friends, lifetime friends, that I know I'm going to keep forever. Thank you. You know, you could probably get them quiet without your voice, so. <laughs> Sharon, Con Sharon Connor, kindergarten teacher, Harris Elementary, 33 years of service. The gingerbread man. Flat Stanley's travels around the world and the Valentine's Day post office activity are among the treasured memories that will be most missed when Sharon leaves Harris Elementary School. Her great love of teaching made her a wonderful first teacher for hundreds of children and she will be missed. It was in fourth grade that I decided I wanted to be a teacher because of an uh, outstanding fourth grade teaching experience. Uh, a teacher that I admired greatly. And you know, I never one day regretted the decision I had made. Um, but there were Im some embarrassing moments and I thought um, rather than tell something embarrassing on someone else, I could tell it on myself. Um, I always felt management was a good way to begin a student's uh, kindergarten experience and so I was always very watchful of my children as we were learning to line up and go down the hallway th to the other part of the building and um, and I was doing this well for a while and then one day I was um, walking backward as was my routine and they were in front of me and we were making eye contact unbeknownst to me there was a lunch barrel about so big in the hallway and the next step I took back landed me in the lunch barrel <laughs> <laughs> well that wasn't enough I continued the practice with not much greater success the next time I did not realize that there were some children in the hallway and um, their teacher only this day I was not wearing slacks. I was wearing a dress. Once again, I took that fateful step and I fell over a child right at the foot of his teacher. And then I realized that I have, I'd better change my practice or have eyes in the back of my head. <laughs> and so I have that storm and I have become much more proficient at it. Um, someone else mentioned about age, and about oh, 20 years ago, um, I had a little girl in my uh, half-day kindergarten class who we had grandparent day, and um, her grandparent came, and afterward she said, you know, you're a lot like my grandma. Well, at that time, I was not yet a grandmother, and I said, okay. And then um, the children began to ask me, how old are you? And I would say, I'm older than your mother. And then the day came when I realized I can't say that anymore because I was older than their grandmothers. <laughs> One of the most rewarding parts of teaching is the relationships that I have made with not only the students but their parents. And um, I have attended many graduations. Um, weddings of my former students. I've had second generation children in my class. Um, but it's rewarding to have a, a former parent call you up and say, would you meet for dinner? And I think that one of the things I will miss the most is building those relationships with the families who have become lifelong friends now. And um, I appreciate all the parents who have entrusted their children to me and it's been a good run. Thank you. 
you've been watching this stack go down too, haven't you? <laughs> Elaine Campbell, Special Ed Assistant, North Crest Elementary. 32 years. <laughs> Elaine has, was a great asset to the Special Ed team at North Crest. Everyone she worked with has something nice to say about her. Many of her students will still ask about her, though she's been gone since January. She was compassionate and understanding, and her smile and positive attitude are greatly missed at Northcrest already. Thank you. Thank you. I wasn't planning on doing this either. <laughs> um, during the summers in between the school years, I used to um, run a summer camp for school-age kids. and. We would do projects and we would go on field trips and, and we had a lot of fun. We tried to make it as much fun as we could but make it educational too. And I was out at Jury Pool with a group of kids that I had worked with that year and a girl came up to me and she introduced herself and she was someone that had been in my camp like six or eight years before. And she was telling me how much she enjoyed our camp, the science projects and the art projects and everything that we had done and told me that she and one of the other boys that she had kept in contact with still had some of the stuff that we had done. And I think it's been like that for all of us, that we may never know the impact that we've had on someone's life. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Michael Bishop. Michael here, mechanical. Okay, all right. Just a minute. Jean Byerly, it's Jean, culinary teacher. There you are. FWCS Career Academy. Twelve years of service. Jean's passion for cooking, especially bacon. You're gonna have to help me, honey. There's just no passion in cooking for me. <laughs> inspired many to enter the culinary field. In fact, many chefs in local restaurants were taught by you. While she was many times, many things to her students, mom was the most important. Staff will miss not only her baked goods, but mostly her can-do, positive, supportive attitude. Thank you. It's been a real privilege to work at uh, the Career Academy. I have a hard time calling it that. But I just wanted to share one thing that has meant a lot to me. And if I, if I never touch anyone else, I feel like I've done a good job. But I had a young man three years ago. And the first day in school, he stood up and proceeded to tell the classroom that in two weeks, he'd be in charge of my classroom. And I looked over at him and I said, uh, I think you've met the wrong person. <laughs> and that Friday... I had a meeting with his counselors and stuff back at his home school because that had been a really tough week and I thought if I don't get a handle on this this is going to be a lousy year and when I walked in the counselors laughed I hadn't said a word and they started laughing I said what are you laughing about this is not funny and they said you've got him we don't <laughs> and uh, within two weeks though the young man proceeded to stand up and tell the class I don't have to be in charge. Mrs. Byerly's okay. And uh, three years later, he's still my friend. On, he's my friend on Facebook. Uh, he's done really well for himself. And to see him change, one of the things that was that I knew he had changed so much was that uh, he wanted to go back to his school in January. And they told him no, that he had done so good there that he had to stay with me. He said, well, then I'm just not going to go. I'm, I'm not coming here. I'll just skip school in the afternoon. And I said, you can't skip school in the afternoon. You've, you've had a very successful semester. Don't give up now. Let's finish, let's finish out good. And he kept telling me, no, I, I'm, I'm just going to skip second semester. And I'd ask him again. And the kids would ask him, come back. And one day he, he was telling the class he wasn't coming back. And I looked at him and I said, in your lifetime in school, how many teachers have asked you to come to their class? 
And he said, I guess none. <laughs> I said, you're loved. Your classmates want you back. I love you. I want you back. And he stayed and had a successful, successful year and graduated the next year. So. Now the first person on the list, Judy Baker, <coughs> reading interventionist, wise apart. See what happened. You set I up really you five to the bottom. <laughs> but see, but you're at the top. Come on. <laughs> You couldn't work with Judy and not be passionate about what you do. Her dedication as a professional educator was contagious and she relentlessly pursued having all students reading at or above grade level, I love you, and passing <laughs> I you. read third grade, the third I read three. I can't even say it, it gives me such a headache. I know, Find me too. <laughs> I just have those words come out of my mouth, it's painful. Finding another reading interventionist with as much wisdom as Judy will be hard to do. So you have to come back then and train the next person. You know, I got to come to Fort Wayne Community School late in my career. I've taught 38 years, but only 16 here. And I was um, allowed to come into Bloomingdale. I have actually three of my principals in this room. And um, if you have been in reading at all, you know we were called chapter teachers, and then chapter one teachers, and title teachers, and title one teachers, and then resource people. And finally, I've graduated to being a reading interventionist. Yeah. And if you, um, uh, I was at Bloomingdale about uh, 10 years, and then Dr. Robinson, out of the blue, called us down to Anthos and said, I'm firing you all. Do you remember that day? I didn't use the word fire. Well, <laughs> that's how it came across to me. Uh, yeah, but that's not what I meant. <laughs> but I was one of the fortunate ones. I had many interviews and actually five job offers. And one of them came to Wy from Weiser Park. And um, actually, I didn't know that was the best kept secret in Fort Wayne Community Schools because we do amazing things in that building, academically, for the arts, and children are so blessed to be there. Um, I'll tell you two quick stories, after you fired me. Um, um, At least I came and did it. I um, one of them, well, both of them happened um, this last week. I was saying goodbye to all of my eight reading groups. And I was saying, well, you know, that means I'm retiring and I won't be back in the fall. Well, I had a second grader said, turned and said to all the children, well, at least you didn't get fired, Mrs. Baker. <laughs> Then I had a fifth grader. This is probably the most heart-rending thing that's ever happened in my career. It was and to say he is a challenge is um, understated. He is the child that has so much ability and you know it's there and you're trying to drag it out of him. And he um, you know, I said the same thing. I'm going to be retiring. I won't be here in the fall. He said, are you coming to Memorial Park with me? I said, no. <laughs> um, I will not be back at school. And then he turns to me, and you never knew what was coming out of his mouth. And he said to me, we're the lucky ones. And in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, what? does that mean? <laughs> you know, I wasn't sure. And he, he turned and said to me, well, the fourth graders won't have you next year, Mrs. Baker. And I almost fell off my chair because um, he's uh, been with me a lot, let's put it that way. But he must have heard something I was saying. And I've been lucky enough to be at Bloomingdale and at Weiser Park. Mr. Key was my principal when I first came there. Fort Wayne Community School is truly a family. We take care of each other. And now it's time for all of us to nurture ourselves in retirement, to do all those wonderful things we've never had an opportunity to do. And for me, it will be to play the most golf I humanly can. <laughs> and to read that book till 2 a.m. and not feel guilty that I have to get up at 6 o'clock and go into school. So nurture yourselves. Have a happy retirement, and God bless you all. Here, you stay here with me. Thank you. 
She said he heard something I said. No, he didn't. He watched what you did. <laughs> and our children and our peers watch how we treat them and what we say to them. And that's why we're fortunate, because in this district, if you listen to every single story, it was about the respect we have for each other and the love we have for the kids. So it was fitting that you were the last person that I called. <laughs> uh, that'll teach you to have a B as <laughs> your initial. Well, I want you to know my main name was Alm, so I was always at the end. <laughs> oh. Mine was Sanders, so it didn't yeah. matter. It's been a wonderful evening. I love to hear the stories. I know sometimes it may seem like, you know, after you've said your piece, can I go, can I go, can I go? But you have to always stay to the end because this is all we ever offer people is a chance to share memories. Um, and I just cannot tell you from the bottom of my heart, board members, I know Ann Duff's there and Becky's here, how much we appreciate the fact that we get to represent you. We get to stand up for you and you just get to do the labor of love. So have a great evening. Thank you for being here. Judy and I have loved performing <laughs> for you here at the end. Uh, but please have a safe time, a travel song. And thank you so much for saying that. Oh, by the way, can I have a copy of this? Because my son will never believe it. OK. <laughs> um, we work through getting copies. So we'll send you copies. Anybody that wants the kind words, just understand I did not write them if it's not the truth. <laughs> thank you. Good evening. <laughs>